Hello and welcome back to the Dungeons and Dragons Podcast UK. My name is Yasmin and I will be the DM. Hi, my name's Spencer. I play Caddo Chasseur, a cleric from Gavany, who has a pet dog called Pickle. Hi, my name is Samantha. I play Laura Greybale and she is a sorceress from the province of Navalia. Hello, I'm Colin and I play Quinn de Greymont, a paladin from Farben in the province of Gavany. Hi, I'm Ryan. I play Ogvar Shawford, a goat herding, mushroom seeking ranger from Keswick. Control of the city now in the hands of Thraben's holy hierarchy, the party consider their moral and civil duties done and dusted. Talk now turns to the urgent and as yet unresolved missive entrusted to Kuin by the Lunarch Machaeus. Time and tide wait for no man, and the team need to start making progress with their fact-finding mission to acquire answers and crack the codex related to this strionic resonator before it is too late. Needing to secure suitable transport for their jaunt down to Jenrick's tower, Ruth is asked to send one of her Cathars out to acquire a sturdy wagon and some suitable steeds. Ogvar and Alora embark on a mini mission of their own to track down some personal purchases and essential travel supplies. Episode 98 Pavement Punch Up. Housekeeping Drum roll, if you please. This week we have a very special and heartfelt thank you from the crew to the lovely Jeff Harmon. For those of you who follow our Facebook group, you may have noticed a post in which some amazing sentiments about our podcast were left this week. Jeff, your thoughts are valued and extremely appreciated. It was amazing of you to take the time to share. It means a lot to all of us. So thank you so very much. Ogvar and Alora, you pop into the guild. Uh, it's quite a... I mean, you are only in the front part of the guild where all of these uh, jobs are displayed, but you can tell that it is quite a muted atmosphere. You can't hear a lot of the joyful merriment that was floating through these kind of saloon-style doors. You hear a lot of whispering and a lot of muttering. You might be able to catch the odd kind of comment about the guards and whatnot and you can probably say that what happened the siege on the church has spread far and wide in the city already and both of you can make me a listen check actually that'll be a nat 20 for Ogvar on oh. his listen check oh wow with how much is your bonus on it as well it doesn't matter a nat 20 is nat 20 <laughs> um that's a 12 Eight. all in for Laura. 12 all in okay so Laura, you probably you, you catch like little drifts of conversation bits saying about guards and the church and you you're able to piece together kind of a, a pretty good idea of what the top hot topic of conversation is Ogfar, you're actually able to hear a little more perhaps as the saloon style doors swing open you hear the burst of chatter and a burst of conversation drift out into this main foyer area and you hear a lot of talking about the pre the events of the previous day however they are blown wildly out of proportion um so you hear stories of golden celestials riding down on winged horses uh, exterminating evil and purging the land and then you hear someone else start up saying that they were you know innocent honest hard-working men and women slaughtered by the bloodthirsty church and it devolves into a big fight and you can hear a big fight break out you can hear tankards being thrown shouting um slurs and curse words being tossed around um and it, it all kind of kicks off inside the guild Okay, so are you looking on the boards for jobs? Yeah. Are you looking around the place or...? 
Yeah. You're going to walk into the fight. <laughs> There'll be a lot of repair jobs going up on the board by the sound yeah. of it. But... Um, there won't be many people to take up the jobs. <laughs> yeah. well, it seems quite rowdy in there today. Yeah, it does a bit. I think we'll just avoid that. Uh, yes, let's just go to the job board. Yes, just stay in the foyer. Yeah, that's a good idea. So we're just going to duck our way over to the um, over to the uh, job board, and if anything flies out the door, we're we're just ducking out the way. Okay. So you make your way over to the job board. Um, you can see there are lots and lots of flies for jobs. A lot of the jobs are in Selhof. Um, but do you know what lies in between Selhof and Jemmick's Tower? No. The road to Jemmick's Tower. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, good call. <laughs> By the look of it, there's... Oh, a Tarask, let me see. <laughs> no, we wouldn't We wouldn't know. So, Would, uh, Mercut... Depending on which way we go, we've got to get across the river. We wouldn't know. We don't have a map to Well, look. you would have. You you have the maps, which how much you have? We didn't oh, look at a lot we've of maps actually got the journeys, that with the things marked on it. Oh, okay. All right. You've got the Mercat Marsh. Uh, then you've got directly east, Jenrick's Tower, and it looks like a marshy place there. Yeah, so you've got to like, cross the river somehow. Right, can you pa- So can basically, that's a no. And, can it's I that map, and it's basically due east, isn't Thanks. it? <laughs> right, okay, so. Um, Laura will turn to um, Ogvar and say, well, okay, uh, there's quite a few jobs on here, but. <laughs> there's quite a few jobs on here, uh, but. And she's going to she's gonna pull the map out of her pocket, um, which is very crumpled by now, and she's just going to open it up and show it to Ogvar. Um, and they're going to look at the 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 route down from Drena- sorry from Selhof down towards Jenrick's Tower. There's they can they can see that there's something called Moorcrut Marsh um, marked on it, but and they've got to cross a river at some further down. But there's nothing else actually marked in terms of place names. So I think she would turn round and go to the desk. And yep. perhaps, um, is there is there somebody at the desk this morning? Yes, there is. There's a, um, a, a quite old, battle-scarred looking man. Um, he looks to be in his late 60s, um, missing a tooth or two. You know, big, thick, ropey scars across his arms, uh, and and you can see quite a nasty-looking scar on his neck, where you could say he's probably escaped death uh, by a whisker. Um, he's dressed quite plainly, um, good, solid clothing, kind of just a beige colour all round. He looks at you, nods, and let me see how can I help. Uh, good morning. I uh, wonder if you can. Um, <laughs> That damn dog follows me everywhere. Shh, I'll put you outside. I didn't say that to the man behind the desk. (laughs) (laughs) That's rather aggressive. It is really, isn't it? Um, uh, We're heading out of... um, We're heading out of Selhof today. Um, Heading down sort of south, southeast direction. We're just going further south. Um, Wonder if there's anything on the job board, because we're not quite sure what places we'll be going through. Um, wondered if you could tell us whether there are any jobs on that board that might be suitable for us, seeing as we're travelling in that direction. Depends where you're going, Missy. Are you going south or are you going Jenrick's Tower's way? We're going out towards Jenrick's Tower. Right, OK. Well, if you're going out towards Jenrick's Tower, there's only the one place between here and Jenrick's Tower, and that would be Stagwick. Right. Is that kind of equidistant between the two places, or...? Uh, it's about halfway, about halfway, yeah. Uh, it's Stagwick, small little town. Um, however, I do think they actually have a job at the moment, if you were so inclined. Uh, well, yeah, we might as well take something if we're going that way. Might be able to help somebody else well, out. Depends on the job, I suppose, but, uh, if you yeah, want some suppose. more information. Yeah, um, w- w- what is it? What What is the job? What's it entail? Yeah, one, one second there. 
and he heaves himself up. You can see he's been he's been sat on like a, a stool, a tall stool. He heaves himself up, and as he stands and begins to walk out from the counter, you hear the sound, the, the footfall, and then a clunk, and a footfall, and a clunk. As he appears around the end of the counter with what is very clearly a below-the-knee amputation, um, which probably you would say put pay to his career. He still looks uh, very very fit, very healthy otherwise. Uh, you could say he was probably an adventurer himself, uh, lived a life of danger, but his lost leg has put pay to his career. Has he got, um, a, has he got a parrot companion by any chance? No, but you might end up with an eye patch if you don't stop. <laughs> Continue. Thank you. So, he walks over to the wall and he pulls a sheet of paper off the wall rips it out so that it, he leaves the pin in the wall just rips it down walks back over to his desk sits back down you see him stretch the one leg out and he rubs his hand on his thigh with the lost leg and he begins to he reads what's on the paper and he pulls a small pair of glasses perches them on the edge of his nose moves the paper about a foot out from his face stares down at, downwards at it and then begins to read uh, yeah, Stagwick uh, not much on the detail side unfortunately uh, but then nobody really wanted to investigate this one I don't blame them uh, there have been reports uh, see, bit of context here, Stagwick's a little town but they've got uh, a fair sized ruin uh, just uh, not, not far out from the main town itself uh, locals don't go there. It's not really a place they want to go. Uh, bit of bad rumours, bit of bad history there. Um, so it's not the most popular place. Uh, but there have been rumours of um, creatures turning up at the moment with the dead holes in the neck. Suggestions there might be a bit of a bitey bastard lurking around there somewhere. Uh, can you just run through that one more time for me? I'm not sure I understood that. Okay. Uh. Town. Has problem. Old ruins. Dead animals. Bite marks in animals. They want it fixed. Oh, I see it, sir. Hmm. Okay, so I, I suppose we could take a look, couldn't we, Laura? Uh. Yeah? What's this? Is this their domestic animals or. Is it their, their stock, livestock, or...? Uh, to be honest with you, I'd say it's probably a mixture of livestock, wild animals, pets, oh. you name it. Oh, general then. Okay. Yeah, it's just, it just says animals, so, you know. So something killing the animals or injuring the animals then? Oh. Oh, no, not, not injuring, just killing. Oh. Oh. That's a bit grim. They don't know what it is. All right, then. Uh, well, I'd, 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 I'd hesitate to make a guess and say it's, it's something with fangs, but... <laughs> He's a sarky bugger, isn't he? Uh, okay, fine. Uh, she's just, we'll, we'll, we'll have a look on the way down. We'll take that one, okay? We'll see what we can do with it. Um, how much does that one pay? Well, <laughs> depends what it is. That's, that's the thing about this one. It's probably why no one's taken it, alongside the fact that nobody really goes down to Stagwick. Uh, but because they're not sure what it is, they don't really know how to cost it out at the moment. Uh, they're offering at the moment 50 gold if you can figure out, and then they'll see where it goes from there. They'll land it privately. So it's only, it's only a small 50 gold, but if it is something particularly nasty and you deal with it, I'd say you'll probably get paid a bit more. Uh, well, should we just take it, Obvar? Because we're, we're going that way anyway. We we'll we'll, we'll just take it. We're going to pass you the guys when we get home. And y yeah, we'll, we'll have a look. Yeah, we should make a joint decision all together if we uh, feel like taking on the endeavour. So, just keep hold of the bit of paper and we'll, we'll go back with it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Um, she's going to show the card so that he knows who's taken the... Show her card for the guild so she, he knows who's taken the actual task, the job. Yep. He looks at it, writes down your name in a ledger. He's got big, meaty hands and he gives the... licks the thumb and just 
slowly flips the pages till he gets to the right page, writes down your details, um, and hands you over the slip of paper, which she takes and pockets. And okay. she'll fold up her map and stuff that back in the pocket in a pocket as well. Okay. Um. So, back to uh, actually no, sorry. So, what are you doing now, Ogvar? Or are you leaving the guild? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I suppose we should go back and back to the church and find the, the other two, three. Yeah, fine. Let's do that then. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Why not? Yeah, it's a okay, quiet morning so for us, really. Makes a change. A lot less arrows involved in this oh, one. Oh God, tell me about it. Just want a quiet day. Both of you make a listen check. As you get hit in the back with an arrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a twenty-two all in from Alora. Be nice. Fourteen for Ogva. Okay. You both hear as you turn to leave, you hear the argument inside. Although it's devolved to the point of blows exchanging, you hear the argument ramp up once again. And you both hear a rather familiar voice. Well, I say, the Battle of Dryfish Dock. Oh. <clears throat> Laura's going to exchange glances with Ogvar, cock her head swiftly to one side and motioning for the door, and she's just going to make a dive for the door. She's getting out of there. Ogvar just nods Maybe a reflex save. Ooh. A reflex save. Uh, okay. Um, uh, that will be a ten. All in. <laughs> okay as you make a dive for the door Laura you hear from behind you but what are you doing you impertinent shit get off me <laughs> as through these swinging saloon doors comes a gaggle of men hefted between them the corpulent body of Jerome Vandertack who is spluttering about dry fish docks, impertinent little shits. As his red and florid face, you can see that several of his buttons are missing off his jacket, and he's held kind of a bit like a like a log. Uh, as they push past you, Alora, sending you scuttling backwards, and probably throw him bodily out into the street. Well, Alora has no idea. She's never met Jerome Van Tack, but she has heard of the tales from her companions. So she automatically realises who this is. It doesn't take a huge amount of perception to work that out. Um, and, yeah, she's just going to watch watch this happen. And then, presumably, watch the men retreat back into the guild again. Oh, no, they don't retreat. They don't? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. They don't retreat. Jerome, after he's rolled on the floor a couple of times, you see his... Um, this city guard's uniform, this obviously this very high-ranking uniform, this blue... Ogvar, you'd obviously recognise him. Um, but his, his blue wool jacket with these shiny buttons which are stretched, you can see several of the buttons are missing. He's got tears in his clothing. Um, his top buttons, where they were kind of uh, done up under his, his flabby jowls, um, they his, his collar's open and ripped. He looks generally dishevelled. He picks himself off the floor, coated in dust, and you can see he's rather unfortunately landed in a pile of horse crap, um, which is now smeared across his kind of his right cheek, down his jowls, and the front of his jacket. Mm. He stands up, and with this very crazed look in his eyes, he starts, I, I'm the captain of the city guard, don't you know, you little shit, I'll have you thrown into Clapton Islands, I'm worse than the Battle of Dryfish Dock, as he starts spluttering. The men who've just thrown him out and begun to turn away, it is like a flash fire going over this crowd. And soon enough, you would probably say that half of the occupants of the guild's dining hall pour out into the street and begin fighting. Uh, and where they were initially just piling up on top of Jerome, they are now fighting each other and it has devolved all these petty arguments which and small grudges they might have ever had Everything is coming out in the wash, and it is now filling the street in front of the guild. Oh, God. Um, 
There's probably one... about 40, 40 odd people involved in this brawl. It is a proper brawl. You see, you know, the odd character come running out of the bar with a chair in hand or a stool in hand. You see tankards getting thrown, bottles being thrown. It is a full scale riot in the street. Uh, bundle, bundle. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's she gonna do? <laughs> she, she's gonna look at, at Ogva. Um, I mean, I don't know. What would she do? Go in the guild, there's plenty of tables now. <laughs> <laughs> Have a quiet drink. Sit down for a drink. <laughs> oh. oh, um, hang on a minute. I don't know what she'd do. No, uh, I think I think she would just tug Ogvar's sleeve and just literally walk away, walk around them, try and dodge between them, and just leave the area. Yeah, make me make me both. You make me a reflex save if that's what you're doing. Uh, Ogvar was like, I, I could try and tangle again. It, it worked well on the other ones. It might slow them down a bit. We could try. T- you could try and tangle. I did think about Greece. Ha! <laughs> That'd be funny, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, Reflex save will be twelve all in. Be fourteen all in. <laughs> That's brilliant. Fourteen. With a fourteen and a twelve, you escape with minor damage. And when I say minor damage, you know you might get struck across the back with a bottle, a flying bottle, and it breaks across your back. And it doesn't do any damage, but. You know, you're just showered with little bits of glass. Uh, you know, you've probably got glass in your hair and you have to kind of tossle through your hair to get it out. Um, you know, you might get caught with the odd stray fist or stray elbow. Um, then it's, it's not dealing any damage. But you are just trying to skirt around and, you know, there's fruit and vegetables being thrown. You see, you kind of have to duck down in time and you see a, a, a semi-rotten tomato splatter against the house uh, to your right as, as it's, it's just thrown. Um, and it is a full-on street brawl. Both of you make me a spot check. That's 11 all in for Valora. Who is contemplating as to whether she should have cast Mage Armour on herself. <laughs> the uh, 17 for Ogbar. Okay, so Laura, as you're escaping, you, you just, your head's down, you've got your hat pulled low, you're keeping your hat on your head, you're making sure that there's nothing going to hit you in the face. Um, Ogvar, as you duck away from yet another rotten cabbage, um, you catch sight of, on the floor, uh, the figure of Jerome attempting to claw and crawl his way out from underneath this mob. He makes direct eye contact with you, locks eyes, opens his mouth to splutter something most likely about Dryfish Dock, before he is grabbed by, you would assume, the ankle and yanked swiftly back into the into the thick of it. Oh, it's, uh, looks a bit, uh, a bit painful in these. Think he's going to be all right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't really know him. I don't, I don't really know who's going to break this up. There's no, there's no city guard to. Uh, to keep the peace. Look, the way I see it is we've done our bit. I don't think this one's for us. Mm. Times are that you, you wish you had a queen. <laughs> He'd enjoy this. No. Okay. <laughs> so you're making your way back up to the church now, yeah? Yeah, I'm yeah. G- Laura will be beating a hasty retreat away from that lot. Yeah. As you as you make your way up to the church, you actually pass. Um, you see approaching you the figure of Armin Dukas. Uh, he has he has about ten cathars with him, and he is he is full on sprinting. He slows down as he sees you, and he goes, "You're right there. Seen a fight by any chance?" Uh, yeah. Uh, Ooh, yes. That that way, Armin. You are Bloody not. Big one. Yeah, you're not going to miss it. Trust me. Uh, yeah, it's it's a bit messy down there. Excellent. Any any perps you saw or uh it's hard to uh, to distinguish who the innocent party is really I think uh, I think they're all guilty yeah um, excellent y- you might need to go and rescue the captain of the guard he's somewhere in the thick of it but right. you, you'll, you'll hear him before you see him though yes wonderful but he looked guilty I think he started it right. uh, well I should take that under advisement thank you Okvar no problem uh, right okay onwards uh See you later. 
Uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Proper dobbed him in. And Armin hot foots it and these he, these cathars behind him they are clearly all very fit he probably works them to an inch of their life every day and drills them um, they're, they're not out of puff they're not out of breath despite having sprinted down from what you would assume would be the church uh, and they head off back the way you've just come from um, presumably to go and break up the fight and, and get involved Elora watches them go raises an eyebrow appreciatively and then turns round and continues to walk fast <laughs> Okay. Kirin and Caddo. You were left in this room in the church. Uh, it's probably more like um, it's, it's just like a little. You'd say it's probably like a little study room or a spare room. There's a you know there's some desks and some bookcases. It actually looks a little bit like a classroom. Um, you'd probably assume it's where Ruth teaches the younger Cathars uh, these two young ones uh, teaches them letters, teaches them to read, write you probably assume it's that kind of room there's a couple of little old kind of style desks with ink wells and the lift top lids um, yeah, and you're just left in this room what are you doing? I'll turn to uh, Q and return to got to uh, Cadena uh, right, well, we're alone, is, is everything alright? Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. But I wanted to speak to you before we spoke to the others. Uh, 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 as as the uh, as I see it, the de facto leader of of our quest, I thought I should tell you first. Um, uh, I had a conversation with Ruth and the bishop last night, um, and uh, they've invited me to uh, take on a role as uh, the uh, religious guide, if you like, uh, uh, for the city uh, in the. Uh, post the problems they're having with Axum. Um, and, and I have to say, I feel uh, duty bound that I should uh, assist with uh, the, the current problems with the city. So I've accepted their kind offer of, of uh, a, a, a becoming his deputy and, and Ruth's assistant and, and, and guiding the city. Um, but I, I, I thought I, I should let you know first uh, before we discuss it with the others. Um, and I wanted to give you a gift because I thought you might find it handy. So uh, I think you've seen me using this, but um, it, it's my belt uh, and it's very handy. Uh, uh, it has the power to heal, which uh, uh, I, uh, uh, I, I know it's my, my primary role within the group. So I thought if I, if I gifted you my belt, it may go some way to help, uh, uh, help with your, your future endeavours. Uh, and with that, I, I will take off my belt and... and Quite a lot of portly belly will fall, <laughs> fall, over, <laughs> fall out of the space that we've been held back by it. Uh, 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 and I shall uh, uh, pass it over. Oh, uh, uh, oh, well, uh, thank you, but uh, I don't know what we'll do with it. You and Pickle. Oh, you'll manage. You'll pick somebody else up along the way. Esther kind of knows what she's doing when it comes to healing people. And, and uh, you'll certainly have more rations available. <laughs> well, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Well, you're, you're. I know we sort of lost. Uh, oh, what was his name? Uh, Gallo. Gallo. Yeah, I know we lost Gallo, but we, you know, I, I knew him, but you know, it hardly really started. But uh, well, we might find him again. You never know. <laughs> oh, don't say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, you know, you've been part of the part of the uh, the old troop. You know. Well, it, well, it might turn out that once you've been through Generic's uh, over to Generic's Tower and 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 sorted out things there, as you come back through this way, it might be that uh, uh, the the Bishop Ruth and I have, have have managed to sort out the issues with Axum and 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 straightened out the city, and it it might be that um, it might be that I can rejoin you, but I suspect I suspect this is. Probably a lifelong task that the, the church have asked me to undertake. But I shall see. I shall see. Well, uh, yes, well, all I'll say is, do, do, do you want me to get you a, a belt to replace this? Because uh, you, I, I, I saw the, the flop forward of your belly <laughs> that this has been keeping in. And if you're staying here with Ruth... Well, I have to say, it was part of my of the decision process. She does cook an awful good <laughs> <thing. laughs> I said, you, you know, because... Uh, well... 
Uh, okay. Uh, well, we'll be so, so sorry. We'll have to tell everybody. Yes, um, yes, yes, yeah, yes. But I want to tell you first, as as, as our de facto leader and 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 uh, the person charged with this holy this holy task. Yeah. Also, you know the warning star. Keep it. Oh, that's very gracious. Thank you. Uh, yes, you know, I was, was going to go and find it and pass it back. But well, you, you know those, uh, you, you know those young kaffirs. If they get out of hand, I know Ruth uses a ladle. You could always use the morning oh star. My. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> so it's always good to have the book of faith in one hand, but just in case you've got the morning star. Oh well, yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. It's very good advice, Kieran. Very good advice. We can have to put a child abuse warning out on this episode. <laughs> <laughs> All kaffirs. Yeah, he did. I said, I didn't say just the young yeah. Kaffars. I mean, Colbin. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> He's going to be my new best friend. May contain mild threat. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Um, you, this this conversation probably wouldn't take long to have um, at all. Um, and and Ogvar and Alora are gone for a little while. So probably in the meantime, you're finding other things to do polishing weapons uh, just having a chat discussing you know what what each other's going to do next um and eventually elora and ogvar return as elora comes through the church she'd probably immediately go and fill up um the bottle the glass bottle the vial large vial that she's well it's larger than a vial isn't it it's a bottle that she's yeah. purchased with holy water and then just slip that into a backpack so yeah. that she's all you, set. You take, you take the cork off, and it's a bit like a, a kind of like a mason jar style top. It's got this metal around the neck of the bottle, which, when you pull the cork over and push the latch down, it will seal the cork in. Yep. Um, but you you pop it off, and it's got this really like pleasing pop as it comes off. You drop it into the fountain, and, and you you push it down. And you get the as it fills up. Uh, and you, yep, yeah, you pull it out, smack the top back in, you get the clack of metal shutting, shake it off a bit, you might dry it off on your cloak, and yeah, you've got a full bottle of holy water. Is, is there any chance that Caddo sees this happening? Uh, well, you're going to be in the church, she's in the church, 50-50, Oh, let's go. or low. Let's go high. Right, do you want to roll it? Oh, oh. Uh, 27, that's no good to me, is it? No, you don't see her do this. Okay. Would any of the Cathars see it happen? Uh, 50-50. Let's <laughs> go high. Actually, there's, Let's actually, go. there's more, ca- there's more Cathars than her. So there's a 75% chance that someone's going to see her. So, high or low? High. 81. Yeah. She does get seen by a couple of cathars. I'm, I'm just bearing um, in mind that, that holy water is something that churches and cathedrals normally charge for. <laughs> She's just helping herself. <laughs> as, 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 yeah. as, as an ungodly person, just dipping a, dip a cup into oh, I'll, have, I'll have half a pint of that. <laughs> <laughs> Laura feels quite entitled. She doesn't even bother to look around because she knows that she's done a lot of service for the church. And at the end of the day, it is the church's property that she is caring for. So Laura actually doesn't care what anybody thinks. Oh, just, they might sidle up to you and ask you for the 25 gold pieces that normally cost for a, fire, for a vial of holy water. Yeah, a, a couple of cathards do see you. They don't say anything. Um, Gerhardt, however, sidles up to you. <laughs> you said, oh, whippersnapper. Oh. Having a bit of a, yeah. having a, bit of a, a cheeky sip, are we? Well... Uh, I've got this eye to look after, haven't I, Gerhard? I've got to get that right. And, you oh, know, my, journey, my journey's quite long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever, whippersnapper. My my holy water's a tad of vodka. <laughs> and off he goes. <laughs> Excellent. And Laura's just going to stand there smiling. <laughs> okay. She's then going to so, go and find the others. Yep. <clears throat> okay. I'll bimbles along with her. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't take you long at all to find Caddo and Kewin. They're pretty much where you left them. Hello, both. Men of action as normal. (laughs) (laughs) Feet feet up on a chair. I see you haven't got lost. Uh, We're both very quiet. 
Well, you'll see the queuing will be just still stood there, looking at the belt and looking at Cado in bemusement, oh, trying to get everything. Because let's face it, he isn't the most intuitive, and he isn't the most. <laughs> What's it? And he's just trying to think what has gone on. Hi, Kieran. We've got what we needed. Oh, what you got there? Uh, it's 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 Cado's belt of healing. Uh, can you two just not get a room? <laughs> <laughs> Are you suggesting, Laura? I'm a man of God. Why have you got to? Uh, why has he got your belt of healing? What's holding your trousers up now? Oh, oh no, 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 no! I, I, I find my trousers are tighter and tighter most days, actually. Oh, I know that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Kvar and Kado are having like a belly off at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, might, I might be having to buy some new ones soon. So, is somebody going to give me a sensible answer? What? Why? Why has he got your belt of healing? Because uh, I've just gifted it to him. That's very kind. Did you need a belt of healing? Kieran? <laughs> <laughs> He's still Is looking Kevin at the belt. Bacon? Kieran's nodded off. Bacon. He's buffer faced, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, well, uh, apparently Kado's going to be staying here. What? At the church. Yes, I've, uh, so uh, the the, uh, the bishop and, and Ruth and I had a discussion uh, last evening, and they've, they've asked me to become kind of the spiritual lead for the town whilst we recover from well this aberration that's been going on. Um, and uh, uh, the, the Cathars that arrived yesterday can't stay indefinitely, so uh, uh, Ruth and I are uh, being charged by Gerhardt to, uh, to clear up, clean up the town basically, and deal with Axum and and the. Uh, Re-recruit some, uh, should we say, more appropriate city guard, I think is probably the way of putting it. Um, and showing the people of Selhof their way back to Aversin. Oh, um... Well, that's a bit of a shocker. Well, I, I, can't, I can't say I'm that surprised. I mean, we're sorry to leave you. We're sorry to lose you, but I can't say I'm that surprised, guys. I mean, when you think I'm about surprised. it, you came down here on a mission to help somebody for the church and... Well, he's just found his place here. It's going to be weird going on without you, but I do understand. Well, as I just said to Kieran, I mean, you, you may come back through here. You may come back through here. Uh, well, we've got to go over to Keswick, which... Uh, after Jenrick's Tower. And uh, yeah, it depends how long it takes for me to deal with the oik up on the hill. But uh, Ruth and I just had a, a bit of a chat about it last night. And uh, uh, and once you've departed, we, we'll, we'll formulate a proper plan. Um, but th th this, this city needs cleaning up. I yeah, I, I totally understand that. Well, yes, uh, I agree. Obviously, uh, like you say, the, Mr. Axum needs to be uh, dealt with in the proper channels. And yes, I, I suppose you would, uh, with your, your judgment, you'd be a fine person to do so. But uh, if, if you are in charge, uh, will you still let uh, ladder maintenance continue? <coughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, <coughs> I'll have to have a discussion with the bishop, but I mean, people have to be able to let their hair down as long as it's done in appropriate ways. I mean, I I see no issue with exploding lettuces. Well, okay, that's, that's uh, good. Uh, we, we may have to we may have to um, apply a surcharge, perhaps. Oh yes. Uh, so that uh, the church gets its cut. Right, right, right. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. You could, uh, you could. You could make a spectacle of Lord Axum there, maybe. I don't know if he wears glasses. Public execution. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad. It's going to be strange going back to just the four of us again. Yes. Does Esther know? Where is Esther? Oh, she, I, I, think she, 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 I think she was talking to... Uh, uh, she was talking to uh, Armin. Yeah, she went for a bit of a wander earlier. I've not seen her since, actually. No. Actually, Armin ran out the door, didn't he? So. Oh, yeah, he passed oh, yeah. us. On, we were coming back. There's a massive brawl in town. It started in the Guild when we were in there, which reminds me, I've picked up... We, well, we've picked up a, a bit of a job. It's, uh, it's it's only 50 gold pieces, and they don't really know whether it's going to be 50 gold pieces or more, because, well, this is it, guys, and read it for yourselves. Um, 
Yeah, we were scared of civil unrest. You mean it started already? Well, oh, that's nothing. They got hold of um, your friend, uh, your Battle of Dryfish dock friend that you were telling me about. They got him, oiked him out of the bar, threw him out onto the street, and there is an absolutely huge brawl going on down there. I mean, it's all kicking off. There's bottles and there's there's food flying. Oh, God. Uh, you know, it was all we could do to get out of there in one piece. But we passed Armin on the way back up to the church and he, him and his guys were going down there, I think, to try and sort it out. Oh, at least it'll give Jerome a new story, I suppose. Oh, my God. Oh, yes, he was still talking about dry fish dock, even, uh, even as he was uh, being... Worked out of the uh, at the guild. Yeah. Well, street, the last time we saw last time we saw him, he was a bit dishevelled. He was right out the front of the guild. I can't remember Literally the name. Literally outside what, what the front street door was of the, the guild. guild on? I can't remember. Oh. Hmm? Perhaps he'll be calling it the Battle of the Guild. Uh, <laughs> that's probably the next thing. <laughs> Battle of the Guild. Well, I took on uh, forty of these hefty blokes single-handedly. Mm. <laughs> I, I have reason to believe if, if some of the things that Ruth said to me last night are to be believed, he might not be there captain of the guard for very much longer. I think she has plans to replace him. Uh, yeah, well the... Yes, Pickle, all right. We'll, well have, they, we'll they have afternoon not, tea in a minute. Well, there might not be much left of him, to be fair. They were tearing a good shred off him. At, well, that was that was the last thing I saw. I wasn't hanging around. OK, oh well. So that, that piece of paper I've just handed you, Kieran, uh, that's... Um, it's a little job in a town called... Uh, Stagwick, which I've written on the map, on my map, because it wasn't on there before. Apparently that's the only town. It's about halfway down to Genrix, but it's the only town between here and there. Oh, okay. It's only a small town, but they've got a problem with something killing the animals, but they don't know what it is. It's Uh, biting them. Biting? Biting. Puncture holes. I don't know. Did you say biting? They don't seem to know much about it. So we'll just have to have a look on the way down. Yeah, I mean, uh, yes. But, but yeah, I mean, it's on the way. You know, could always back up. Couple of, couple of days travel. I, I might be ready to bash something. So, uh, does anybody know if we've got these horses in the wagon yet? We've been gone a while. Uh, nobody, so nobody's come back yet. No, well, we've been sat here anyway. No, no, no we've heard, I think. Right. No, in fact, nobody's bought afternoon tea yet, have they? <laughs> um, okay, so I, I think probably. Uh, uh, I, I'm sure Ruth was mentioning mentioning something about uh, before you take up an office, you've got a office in, in the church. You have to go uh, on a two week fast. <laughs> yeah, so I might take a pass on that particular activity. <laughs> He supplicates himself much more, he'll end up like a human seesaw, won't he? That's all right, yeah. <laughs> if, we could, if we stay in port, he ain't got to go anywhere, does he? The first ever sleeping policeman. I'm just going to lie <laughs> in the street. <laughs> like wagon style. You'll know where he supplicates himself because there'll be a dip in the floor which fits his belly. <laughs> um, okay. You eventually, as you're finishing your discussion up, um, Gerlock appears in the doorway knocks on the door uh, she has a she has like a little serving trolley with her which has got like a platter of sandwiches on it and she tells you um Gerlock is relatively tall um quite well muscled she wears uh, very much kind of hunter's clothes as opposed to the rest of the Cathars who tend to wear the white robes of the church or some variation of um she actually wears dull greens and greys and browns. Um, she dresses a lot like you, Wogvar, in the sense that you can tell that she's quite rough and ready. She's usually, she's usually, you know, she's used to a life in the woods, perhaps. Um, you know, you can see dirt smeared up her arms, dirt crusted under her fingernails, which are kept really short. Um, stains, like plant stains on her hands. Um, she's quite you can tell she's probably someone who's quite um she lives a very much outdoor lifestyle Mm -hmm. uh on her left arm you can see part way up her arm she has um what looks like some scars and some bruising and you say this is probably from a bowstring where she's um released arrows without having any um arm protection on 
uh, and it, the snap of the bowstring against her arm has, you know, over the years, cut enough times to leave this kind of silvery patch on her arm, um, which is clearly just from use, and it's just scarred over, basically, with the trauma of it. Um, but she's quite soft-spoken. She has her hair cut relatively short, pulled back out of the out of her eyes, into a low, loose bun. Um, she's got quite pretty, pretty, quite delicate features. Um, and she pushes this trolley in. She says, "Oh, um, Ruth set me up with lunch. Uh, I've been to the the um, horse masters, and um, I've I've sourced some horses. I've sourced a carriage for you." Um, all that's left to do is, is to pay for them to cover the costs. Um, okay. There, there might be... I, d- I didn't know whether you wanted saddles and bridles, um, but the cost for the wagon and the horses um, is a flat 300 gold fee. Did a bit of haggling and uh, got a favourable price. They're, they're good horses, uh, solid horses. Um, they're, they're strong. They're sturdy. They'll pull a carriage. You can ride them as long as you get, you know, the appropriate tack for them. Um, yes, you, you're certainly not getting a bad deal on them. Um, and then feed, feed-wise, I've negotiated a price down. Um, the, the horse master is willing to do four copper pieces per day's worth of food, um, but that will be up to you to choose how much you take with you. Um, but yes, the, the horse masters, uh, and she gives you directions over to the horse masters. Hmm. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Gerlach. That's uh, very, very kind of you, and uh, thank you for your expertise in the uh, in the horses. She dips her head to you and then very quietly leaves. Well, I, I suppose uh, we have to go see these, this horse master and uh, give him what we owe him, I suppose. Yeah, it might pay to to get a saddle and bridle or a couple of them at least then if we need to unleash you know un- unhitch a couple of the horses and use them you might as well oh, yes. okay. put the tack on the back of the wagon oh yes sir uh, yes we should uh, I think we should go and uh, pay up the horses and but um, are we coming back this way to say uh, our final farewell to uh, Mr Chasseur I don't... I'll, I'll come down with you <clears throat> oh okay even yeah, better I, th- I think if we go down, pick up the horses, and then we just leave. Okay. It'd be, be good to have you come with us, Cadell, and the, for, for our final farewell. Yeah, so I, I think at the church door, Alora would probably, it would be a case of hugs to various people and thank them very much for their hospitality. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so you, you go to leave, um, and obviously you'd have told Ruth you were going you're not just going to go without telling anyone no. um, Esther is very tearfully giving Florent yet another smothering of kisses um, and she does the same to Robert and Callie um, she is she is still coming with you she's determined to see this through to the very end um, but she, she just gives Florent a smothering of kisses um, does the old does the kind of grandma thing of sees a bit of dirt on his nose, licks her thumb and then furiously scrubs at his face um, and yeah, all of the Cathars um, not not the ones who've just uh, just arrived but people like Gerlock, Hall, Colbean you see Colbean, he looks like he's got a little tear in his eye um, and as you kind of go down the line and say goodbye to them and whatnot, he hands over to you um, Ogfar he hands over to you um, a very small package, and he just he, he kind of tearfully kind of <sniffs> boom geezer boom. And Ogva sort of nods and puts his fist out and gives him a fist bump and goes boom. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Amazing. Yeah. Um, so you go down the line up and, and Ruth gives you all a big hug and uh, she gives you her blessings on to, on your way. Um, pats, pats Caddo on the back. Obviously, she knows you'll you'll be returning. Um, just pats you on the back and gives you a bit of a nod. Um, as you come to Gerhardt, he is propped up on a pew. She rather harshly stamps on his foot, uh, and he uh, 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 whip stamps. Uh, 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 and he looks at you. He, you see his eyebrows, uh, these big, magnificent, bushy eyebrows. They kind of 
soften. And he looks at you, all of you and goes, Well, whippersnappers, uh, we are indebted to you. You've truly helped the church and your, your, your benefactors. You are our benefactors. Uh, and I, I if you should, wish you all of the best luck on your ongoing journey. And from beside him, he pulls out um, several items. He pulls out the skin of Celest- the Celestial, which he passes over to you, Kewin, and he takes your hands in his, and he mutters a quick prayer. And he does the same with you, Elora, with your bag of flames. And Ogvar, you've still got the boots, but he, he mutters a prayer over you and, and blesses you on your journey, effectively. Uh, and as you go to leave... You are all... All of you can make me a listen check. No, spot check, sorry. Spot or listen, which is, whichever's higher. Does that include me? Yes. That'd be a ten all in for Laura. Ten all in. What are we doing? Spot or listen? Whichever's highest. Ooh, we like that then. Yeah. That'd be spot. Yeah. Fourteen. <laughs> Fourteen. Twenty-two for Ogvar. Twenty-two. Uh, which one was that on Ogvar, sorry? Spot. Check. Okay, as you turn to leave, Ogvar, you catch, uh, approaching the church, the familiar figure of Armin Ducasse. Uh, the Cathars behind him appear to be dragging an assortment of people. Um, some young, some old, some male, some female. Um, they all look to be in varied states of disarray. These are probably the so-called perps. Um, but held strongly in Armin's grip is the absolutely flabbergasted dishevelled figure of Jerome van der Tack who is spluttering don't you know who I am I'm uh, mm, uh, damn you I, I'm Jerome van der Tack I'm captain of the guard and he is spluttering his face is it's puce it is puce and he looks like his eyes are about to pop out of his head he is that angry he is tossled he is his clothing is torn he has he sports a absolutely beautifully shining black eye um and armin is his expression is tortured um he's he's clearly dragged jerome all the way up to the church and jerome has clearly not stopped and it isn't you know, it's a hot second before you hear, Don't you know I was the, in the Battle of Dryfish Dock, the greatest battle in Selhoff's history? <laughs> and he off he goes. And he's on a pure rant about the Battle of Dryfish Dock. He is wheeled past you uh, and handed to some of the uh, some of Armin's Cathars who remained at the church. And they probably drag him off towards... Um, towards the back door. You're not sure whether they're going to take him down to the vault and lock him in the vault or put him outside in the garden. Um, but he disappears off. And you see this other, this lineup of other perps go past. Uh, and Armin stands. Clearly he can see that you're leaving. You've all got your packs ready. Um, everything packaged away. You are literally just about to cross the threshold. He looks at you all. He goes, well, um, I wish you the best of luck on your journey. Um, I suppose I shan't see you for another while, Cuban. Uh, no, no. Uh, well, you never know. You know. You know. Yes, well, good, I, good, good, good I luck, f- your family. So I have the feeling that uh, my duty should keep me here longer than we all thought. Um, anyway, Cuban, try not to get lost in the woods. Ha <laughs> ha! It's all right. I've got off <laughs> Laura, <clears throat> Laura's going to look at Armin and she's just going to smile and sort of incline her head and just say it was a little brief but a pleasure to meet you nonetheless I wish you good fortune he looks at you he takes your hand, kisses the back of your hand he goes it was enchanting to meet you <laughs> Laura's going to blush slightly but she's going to smile very sweetly at him I told you he preferred the older lady <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Hogwarts wow. looks back at Kewin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> looks back at Kewin and just sticks his tongue out like. Eh. Does Alora hear this? <laughs> You're stood right there. Yes, you hear this. She's gonna shoot him a look and say, uh, "That's enough of that." Uh, well, he, he's only a slightly older than me. You know, how old are you? 
Uh, she got a look now. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> don't know. I'll she get back to on on her fingers. One. I think thirty-four. Well, that's ten years older than me. He's only just older than, slightly older than me. He's more what it age. Yeah. He grins at you, Kieran, gives you a clap on the shoulder, gives Ogvar a clap on the shoulder, nods at Caddo and goes, Well, I, um, I, uh, I think I have to go and tend to our uh, unwilling house guests, so to speak. Laura's going to turn to um, Kieran and say, The thing with being ten years older, that an older woman has a lot more life experience, Kieran. <laughs> <laughs> you cougar, you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. As he turns to leave, Esther catches hold of Armin and gives him a kiss on the cheek and a bit of a, a bit of a pinch. Um, yeah, gives, mm, does that kind of old old lady thing. Um, and he turns away, nods at you once more, and disappears into the back of the church. And you are now out of the door and leaving the church behind whilst out and about Ogvar and Alora made a beeline for the board in the guild hoping for a handy assignment to achieve a little extra coin en route however they got more than they bargained for as arguments broke out in the bar and subsequently spilled out onto the Selhof streets with tempers flared fisticuffs fanned the flames of fury as civil unrest unleashed itself the crowd, baying for blood, the familiar face of Van der Tack was now under attack as he found himself the central character of the commotion. The two companions slipped stealthily away, heading back, pausing only to appraise the dashing Armin Ducasse, who, with his Avicinian associates alongside, presented an imposing and impressive show of strength. Meanwhile, up at the cathedral, Caddo chats to Kewin regarding his conversation with Gerhard and Ruth. He reveals that he will be remaining in Selhof and will not be part of the party setting out for Stagwick. Hey, you made it this far, so lend us your ears for a moment longer if you will. Firstly, we are most humbled that you are enjoying our yarn and the crew thank you from the bottom of their hearts for your patronage. Producing this podcast is incredibly hard work, and as such, if you would like to support us, there are a few ways in which you could really make a difference. Sharing links to friends and family helps to spread the word so others like you can find us, and in turn, they too can enjoy the show. Equally helpful is leaving a five-star review on Spotify and any other streaming services, which will help us immensely. Or, if you feel you could go that extra mile and contribute a few coppers to keep our creative juices flowing, you can hop on over to our Buy Me A Coffee page or drop us an email. We would all be immensely grateful for your support in any form. Lastly, we invite you to visit our website where you will find information on our campaign from backstories to settings. Join our Facebook group or follow us on Twitter. All the links are in our episode bios. Don't forget to smash the subscribe and download buttons so you never miss the next episode. See you all again next week, folks.